Albuquerque, New Mexico. Always something special when the autumn calendar pauses on homecoming. It's time to wear your Saturday best and bring a high-octane smile that will fuel a maniacal effort to bring joy to the local crowd. The Loba Walk to the gates of University Stadium. A little extra special this day. Beautiful day in Albuquerque, New Mexico. University Stadium be rocking for homecoming and look who's come to visit. It's the Rainbow Warriors from Hawaii to take on the Lobos of the University of New Mexico. Mountain West Conference action for Branch Field at University Stadium. And we welcome you upstairs officially. With Seth Bonner, I'm Drew Goodman. We have a great early evening for football. And we talk first about the University of New Mexico. They come in with uh, three victories. Their goal is six. Six, as we all know, sends you to a bowl game. And for Hawaii, they've been struggling. They've had to come to the mainland. They've played perhaps the most brutal schedule in college football. It's an opportunity for them to get healthy. And to get off the snag. They've lost three in a row. That It's a team that's extremely physical but have been beat down by their schedule. They feel like they can come in here, play well, get a win on the mainland, and get back home with some confidence. And, of course, New Mexico needs victories as the second half of their schedule is more difficult than the first half. More on them in a little bit. We just got news. Max Wittick, that's not what you want to see if you're Hawaii. They're 6'4", 240-pound senior quarterback. He's going to be in street clothes this afternoon. Bad knees, cannot go which means a guy that has experience, Ikaika Woolsey, will play quarterback, and he started 12 games last year, so it's not unfamiliar territory. Absolutely, 12 or 13 game. This team, team knows him very well, 13 interceptions, but he also had 13 touchdowns. Knows how to find the guy and can use his legs to get out of trouble as well. They look for him to give him that boost of momentum to try to get this win. Well, there's no quarterback or controversy with the University of New Mexico, but they two, they play two players. Lamar Jordan will play most of the time, but Austin Apodaca, who has a, a lot of throwing talent, will play some as well. And spectacular, and a lot of people don't agree with that model, having two quarterbacks. I say if you have two, you have none. I think both these guys add different dimensions to this offense. Lamar Jordan, the quick, fast option runner. Apodaca, if they get behind or, or want to change tempo, he can come in and throw the ball around nicely. Does a good job running the offense. And this is the guy they want to get going. Jarrell Presley rushed for over 1,000 yards last year in this run-heavy offense. This year, he hasn't gotten on track yet. He really hasn't, but I think that's because they're spreading the ball around. They're working with a new offensive line. But this is a guy that on any play can take it 65, can take it 50. He is a big play guy. They have to get him going if they want to get this offense back to the top in the nation in rushing where they were a couple years ago. Yeah, a little bit of a contrast. New Mexico wants to really run the football. Hawaii wants to mix it up a little bit. Lobos making their way out of the tunnel and onto the field at University Stadium and carrying that flag, Jack Lamb, the Lobo man. He's a walk-on from Sandia High School in Albuquerque. Hawaii has made another long trek to the mainland to take on the Lobos. Let's go field level. Tori Holt, the third member of our crew. Tori, how you doing? Well, thank you, Drew. Well, it's a little warm down here on the field. A little bit different than what we've seen in the past coming here. Once the sun usually drops, it cools off quite a bit and the wind picks up. We'll have to see how that plays out. But a couple of keys to the game for both of these teams. When I had a chance to catch up to Bob Davey, he was pretty simple. He wanted to talk about preparation and execution. And in his preparation coming into this game, you have to understand your assignments. So when it's game time, you can execute those assignments. He didn't feel like they did that last week on offense or defense consistently enough against Nevada, and he wants to be able to get back to that and execute their technique. For Hawaii and Norm Chow, they need to stop that option early. They don't want to get that run game going. It's very hard to simulate in practice for them, but they had a redshirt freshman who did a great, great job, John Ursua, in simulating that option offense and obviously convert on third downs. Their time of possession has been atrocious this year, and that is not very uh, normal for a Norm Chow coach team. Just 22 minutes of time of possession per game, and obviously that has to change, Drew. No, absolutely, and uh, they have struggled when they've left the island to move the football. It is ideal to, to do anything outside. Baseball, we want to play hoops outside, whatever it is, 70 degrees, very little wind right now. And back deep for the Rainbow Warriors, 12 is Keelan Ivolika. He's back around his own goal line. And this ball is uh, gonna go about 
you used to say like eight yards deep. How about eight <laughs> yards beyond the back line of the end zone? Time now for the quick and loans players to watch. And for Hawaii, Paul Harris is one to watch. Lee Crosby, who's the Lobo, kind of a, a fifth defensive back, if you will. He really is a hybrid linebacker DB, a guy that they use. They don't have to sub much, keep him on the field. He's great blitzing. For Hawaii, Paul Harris, man, they're looking to get him going to get that run game going so they can open up the play action pass. And they have big receivers. They come out two tights, and Harris gets the call right away, and he tries to bounce it on the outside zone. He gets about five, maybe six yards, so a solid gain on first down for Hawaii and Paul Harris. Really good sign early that they're able to, to lock on up front. Tuiunga did a nice job sealing that edge and helping him get to the edge. As you get a look at Ikeka Woosley and his numbers from the season, he's, he's a guy that's played a lot. He's an experienced guy, not going to be afraid to come in here and make plays. Zone read look, he wants to throw it, and this is something that he brings to the table far more than a Max Wittick. Wittick is your classic drop back quarterback. This kid will tuck it down, and he has good feet. Sets up the third and short as he scrambles out to about the 33 yard line it's a good job of reading the edge didn't make mistake didn't like the route they ran a nice little waggle there didn't like what he had upfield picked up a couple yards puts him in a nice third and short position where the playbook is open yep they go trips to the top and they're gonna throw it outside and right around the sticks the reception was made on a kind of a jet out cut and it was held hauled in by Dylan Colley it was a transfer from BYU, and if that name sounds familiar, well, it should. He's the little brother of Austin Collie. Who was pretty good. Who was very good. Just, could, just can't stay healthy in the league, but this kid is dynamic. Nice job picking up the first down. Good tackle on the play by Dakota Cox in coverage. We'll hear that name quite a bit. And here's Harris busting it up the middle. And that's a solid gain on the ground. Give him 11. Another first down out to the 46-yard line. And once again, it's 49 Dakota Cox. See the misdirection outside. Good job of sealing on the edge by R.J. Hollis. The redshirt junior from Phoenix did a nice job collapsing the right edge down. And Harris on the zone read gets a good block, and he'll fall forward to the 45. That's an advance of nine on first down and into Lobo territory. Paul Harris has brought back that confident running ability to this offense. Missed a few games with injury, but is back with a vengeance. And if it looks familiar, it's exactly how Nevada ran the ball against the Lobos a week ago. That time, Harris uh, saw a couple red jerseys in the backfield, and he does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Leading the charge was Nick Diavonzo. See, Diavonzo is a junior from Baltimore. It's a great job of fighting off the block and getting in the backfield. Penetration kills all. Anybody that plays any type of offense, no, you can't have any penetration. Yvonzo did a nice job of knifing through. Out of the gun. Bunch formation left. It's third and about a yard and a half. And on a slant, it is caught for a first down to the 43-yard line. Collie. And again, it's Collie. This is a great little route. They run both receivers. They had a trip set. They're going to run the two guys outside. And watch Collie start the out and then trails back underneath. It's too late for Ryan Santos as he comes downhill to make the tackle. Well, Kali had one catch, uh, excuse me, had 14 catches coming in. And he's got two early. Little bounce, look at that spin. Beautiful run. That's Steven Laka Laka, who's a junior from Oahu. Jimmy Carson made the tackle. They're getting what they want right now between the tackles. Up front, and it looks a lot like Don Johnson running the week ago from, from Nevada. I mean, he had everything he wanted up there, and they gave up a lot of yards on the ground. They've got to fight off blocks, stay in their lanes, and not jump in and out of gaps. Harris is back in there. He's offset to the left. And he'll get the football in the zone. Reed breaks uh, one tackle, but he can't get rid of Dakota Cox. This kid is just a tackling machine. He has three tackles already in the game, 259 in his career. A year ago, he averaged just under 13 stops a game. That led the nation. Everybody. 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 I mean, that, he's a 
He's got a nose for the ball, and he's extremely bright as a football player. Uh, started as a true freshman here. They love this kid, and he is all around the football field. Got a screen set up, and this is going to go for a first down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. This good-looking drive continues. Let's Catching the football was Isaiah Bernard, a junior college transfer from North Hills, California. And I really like what they're doing offensively. They're keeping them off guard. You see the fake screen right. They come back to the tunnel screen on the left side. And Bernard right over the top of Ryan Santos. And looking to bust it toward the end zone to the two-yard line goes Harris. First and goal there. That's this a, is foreign territory said for Hawaii. This is how rough it's been on the mainland for them. They have one, one red zone penetration this year away from Oahu. And this is just great power football. And I tell you, Paul Harris has provided a shot in the arm for this team. And he walks into the end. Oh, excuse me. I thought they gave it to him. They, Woolsey kept it. And he's tackled in the secondary by Daryl Chestnut. It's a really good job of scraping by the linebacker. He's, he's a guy that doesn't start, but he makes a lot of plays for this team. Yeah, it's Ryan Langford. There's two 20s. There's Daryl Chestnut who wears 20 also. Second and goal. And Harris leans in. He's into the end zone. Touchdown for the first time in four games wow. away from Honolulu. Hawaii has scored. Drew, let me, let me ask you a question. Watching the way these guys just, I'm going to use an old term here, matriculated the ball down the field. I mean, that's a, an amazing stat when you say that. I mean, they came right down. They were extremely efficient in the passing game, converted on third down twice. This is a team that looked like they knew what they were doing. It's, it's surprising that they hadn't scored any points. Rigoberto Sanchez adds the extra point. It's 7 to nothing. So Hawaii with a most impressive 75-yard drive covering 12 plays in 4 minutes and 40 seconds and the one-yard run for Paul Harris. A great start for the Rainbows. Carlos Wiggins, 24, is the man that uh, New Mexico would like to see handle the football. And it's in the direction of Wiggins. And he's three yards deep. He's coming out. He's got explosive speed. He's in the open field. You will not catch him. He is gone. Fifth career kick return touchdown for Carlos Wiggins. Wow. You want an answer? Wiggins just gave you one. That is big time. Great job of blocking out in front on this play. And, you know, you can't teach that. You can't teach speed and vision. And once he makes one cut, he gets a couple of really good blocks early. And right here, leading up in the hole, is Daryl Chestnut, and it's over with from there. You see him watching on the jumble trying to... But he, no one, you're not going to yeah. catch me, but I'm just going to throttle down a little bit because I don't have to really and it, and explode if, anymore. If you looked at his hands coming up toward his... Uh, his face mask, and he looked like a sprinter, like a trained sprinter. He is. And one of the uh, top sprinters in the Mountain West Conference in track in the 60 meters. Well, he, he made this one 104. 7-7. Seven, seven. Buckle up. This is fun. Carlos Wiggins, two years ago, is an All-American kick returner. He had three touchdowns. He had one his freshman year. Last year, he was all banged up. So, so this is number five. I'll tell you what, if he gets a little seam, it's all over. It is, and, and I think being humbled a bit a year ago, going through the injuries, not being able to perform, not being able to play, it made it mean something to Carlos Wiggins. He came back and worked his tail off, got back in great shape, and has had a really productive junior year so far. Elon Ivaliko is back, and this one is about 11 yards beyond the goal line. So once again, it'll be 25-yard line, the starting spot. 5'8", 165-pound senior from Plano, Texas. He can go. Well, Hawaii's offense really went the first time they had it, 12 plays, 75 yards. And they give it to Paul Harris, and he slips a tackle and gets three or four. 
I'm sure they'll take that. That's a win on first down. They've been averaging 82 yards a game rushing, 56 on that first drive. So they're well ahead of their normal. Now Max Wittick is helping out, flashing signs. He'd prefer to be in the football game. Senior transfer from Southern Cal. Right now he's going to watch the Kaika Woolsey operate the Hawaii offense. And Woolsey under pressure has got to throw it away. That's a good decision. Very good decision. It tells you he's in control of what he's doing. Dakota Cox bearing down on him. Also Lee Crosby bringing the heat. Or Timmy Carson, excuse me. I never got why you roll a guy to his left when he's a righty in the short side of the field where there's no room for him to really get ready and get himself squared up to throw the ball. Trips to the wide side on third down. We'll call it six. A lot of space for a bubble screen. Collie is number three out there. They fake the screen. Look, it breaks down, and now Woolsey with an emergency pitch, and it's going to come up short of the first down to Harris. And it'll be a punting situation for Hawaii. That's a really good play by Woolsey. I mean, a little scary. However, in order not to take the loss and, and keep anything positive going, he didn't take the sack. He was able to pitch it to a playmaker, and you give him a chance to get a first. He came up about four yards short. Cranston Jones ran him out. Well, Carlos Wiggins back on the field. He's back at his own 15. And this is going to be a really effective punt. Going to roll dead. Got to go catch that the punt. 15, about the 11 yard line. And so with 8.48 to go in the first quarter, New Mexico 7, Hawaii 7. We're on Lamar Jordan, the quarterback for New Mexico, and we come back. And Torrey Holt, I'm Drew Goodman. It's first and 10 for New Mexico at their own five yard line in a 7 7 game. Hawaii went 75 yards, first time they had it. Carlos Wiggins returned the ensuing kick 104 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> And they'll hand it off in a great gain on first down for Terion Gibson, the junior running back from Dallas. And a flag is back at around the seven yard line. Well, Lamar Jordan is a redshirt sophomore. He's from Frisco, Texas. He was widely recruited as an athlete. In fact, Arkansas was a place he probably was going to sign, except Bob Davies said, we're going to let you play quarterback. We want you as a quarterback, and that intrigued him. It really did, and that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to come in and play quarterback and continue what he'd been doing back in Frisco, Texas. And here's the option, and Gibson breaks a tackle, and he's out to the 40-yard line before he's finally knocked off his feet by number eight, Julian Jenner. Put a nice move on Morell Jackson there in the hole. New Mexico had that triple option stymied in Reno last week against Nevada. In fact, a rarity. They actually had a few more yards throwing the football set than they did running it. Very rare. And that's not their identity. That's not who they are, not who they want to be. They want to be able to throw the ball. It's only in, in positions where they have guys wide open. Is Ooh, tell you what, yeah. Lamar Jordan took it. A lick right at the 45-yard line. Danny Malonga. Great hit. Yeah. <laughs> Framed him up. That's, that's a Texas thing, man. Malonga's from Bedford, Texas. He don't like those Frisco guys, and he puts it on him right here. Whoa. Oh, that's a great shot. That was explosive, too, right in the impact point. Great read by Lamar Jordan, but he takes a lick. And here's Presley with some room to roll. Presley still going. Presley to the three yard line. The fifth to number six, Presley. 33 yards on the advance on the pitch to Jarrell Presley. First and goal, New Mexico. This is all set up by the great pitch because it looks like there's enough defenders. There's two for two, but you can see Garcia Williams get caught staring at the quarterback. Great pitch outside to Presley, and then it's all him. Using the footwork, making moves, 
making guys miss. I mean, this option attack is so dangerous. If you just fall off your guy for a half a second. Ball is on the ground, and no, Hawaii's wasn't. got the football. Hawaii's got the football, just the fourth fumble this year for New Mexico, which is really shocking that it's so few for a team that handles the football and pitches it as much as they do, but that one's that was an blown enormous up. turnover. They had driven 93 yards. That was blown up by Tuli Masayali'i right in the backfield, right there at the junction point. Not a clean exchange from Jordan. And that's a, I mean, double-double. That's the daily double right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Knock it out and recover it. Big-time play for Hawaii. Two right, one left, third and eight. Woolsey slides out of the pocket, throws a deep ball, and he's got a man at the 47-yard line. As the protection broke down, Got to stay I don't know if he coverage. rerouted, but Isaiah Bernard came free. A big 39-yard gain. You see the eye, so he stops. And look at look at the eyes of Cranston Jones. Gets him in trouble. He stares in the backfield, but this doesn't take off to run. He's staring in the backfield and allows Bernard to get upfield on him. That's a great throw by Woolsey on the run. Big play for the Rainbows. Yeah, a couple catches now for Bernard. He had just eight coming in. And here's Woolsey going to the edge, and he'll dive down and pick up a four. Again, they're winning first down. They're able to get positive yards, four plus on first down. And that's that bodes well for the offense. Daniel Henry made the tackle. Woolsey's four of six throwing at 57 yards. There's Norm Chow. This is the first meeting Norm when he was quarterback coach for Lavelle Edwards at BYU. And they had a few quarterbacks there, as I recall. Just a couple. I mean, that was a machine putting out the quarterbacks. Man, Bosco, Steve Young. On and on, right? This is Laka Laka. Laka Laka with a lot of room. To the 31-yard line of New Mexico. They'll move the chains again. 20 on that advance for Laka Laka. They're getting gashed up front right now. See great lockdowns, seals everywhere, and it's just guys running out of lanes and not being in the proper lanes. As Hawaii goes up tempo, short carry there by Woosley. One of the things they've stayed away from so far, and it's early, is negative plays. And New Mexico has been really good at producing negative plays. Yeah, eight a week ago, when, even, even when they got gashed with the running game, they had eight negative tackles, eight tackles for loss a week ago. In fact, they're good number. Yeah, they're sixth in the country in producing tackles for loss, 51 of them coming in. But Hawaii's been moving north and south pretty efficiently so far. They'll give it to Harris, and he'll run it in the A-gap to the 25-yard line. That'll set up a third down and four. Strong run there by Harris, Dakota Cox finally gets him down, but see him put his shoulders, head and shoulders down and just hit the crease. A nice game. Hawaii averaging just 82 yards on the ground coming in. They've already got 94. Third and four, they'll go empty. Blitz coming, five, Woolsey in trouble, and he's tossed down, and a flag came in. Thrown to the ground was Maurice Daniels. Holding number 86 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth out. That's a, that's a tough one. Maurice Daniels has three and a half sacks on the season. You get a tight end out there who slides inside. Great hoop run with finger strength right there. Daniels to get him down. Yeah, and Wol Woolsey's not a small guy. He's 215, 220 pounds. Woolsey's going to hold it now. And Rigoberto will try it. Rigoberto Sanchez will try it. Kick of 49 yards, which would be a career long. And it is through. So Hawaii gets the long kick from Sanchez, the junior from Hamilton City, California. And the Rainbow Warriors lead New Mexico 10-7. And it's like some Rainbow Warriors have made the long trek from the islands. 
10-7 Rainbow Warriors, and they're going to keep it away from Higgins. You understand that, and it's uh, dropped out of bounds. Yeah, we, we were talking to him about Phillip Rivers. He was one year at NC State. Phillip Rivers was a very talented freshman as uh, Gibson takes the handoff and gets a couple yards to the 20. And he, and he told us when we asked him, did you think about changing his throwing motion? Because Phillip Rivers has been a great NFL player, obviously. Kind of a, a, a three-quarters delivery. He said, nope. He said he could spin it. And that's true to what Torrey was saying. What did he say? We called we call him the javelin thrower. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Just like that, the javelin thrower. Yeah. Well, the javelin thrower is uh, pretty, good. pretty fine NFL quarterback. And it was That's the end of the first quarter. So that will be the final snap of the first quarter. It's been interesting. We've seen long drives. We've seen a 104-yard kick return as well from Carlos Wiggins. 10-7, Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, you want to talk about a long haul. Nobody travels like Hawaii. They went to Columbus earlier. Then they, the next week they went to Madison, then Boise. And now they're in Albuquerque. That's a shorty going to Albuquerque. Next week's going to be easy. They just go over to Reno. They have to go to Vegas later in the year. When you tally it up, at the end of the season, they'll have flown more than 40,000 miles. One of the things they do at Hawaii to incentivize recruits, here's the option, and to the 23-yard line goes Woolsey. And he's wrapped up right there and dropped. But um, one of the things they do to incentivize, because when they fly from Hawaii, they always go to Los Angeles. And then they'll charter from L.A. to wherever the, the game site is. But they fly commercial. And so the kids get to keep those miles, which helps if you're going to bring family over to Honolulu, that sort of thing. And he's got room to run, and he's going to be dropped right around the 29-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. He had to get to the 28, so first down scramble there for Lamar Jordan. They ran the X spot route on the short side of the field where they just bring the receiver down inside, and they trap him between a couple linebackers. You see him come right into the vision. That's what he wants, but didn't like it. And I love the fact that he got outside and made a quick decision and just went and got the first down. Wiggins in the slot to the near side. And they're going to throw a bubble to uh, Wiggins, and he's tackled in the open field. That was well done by Jamal Mayo. In space, you got to tackle. Great job. First quarter numbers favoring Hawaii offensively and favoring Hawaii on the ground as well. Probably a big surprise. When you look at what, what happened a week ago to this New Mexico team. They're still trying to get back to form, figure some things out. Anytime you see this team with just as many passing yards as rushing yards, you know it's not right. Here's Jarrell Presley. Stops, starts, finds a little bit of an opening. Out to the 42, and that'll be enough for a first down. One thing you got to give Coach DeBess and Coach Davey credit for is they stick to their guns. They will not change who they are and what they do. They'll continue to, to try and grind it out and get that running game cranked up. Presley, four totes, 39 yards, 33 on one uh, carry. Brian Urlacher jersey's very popular here in Albuquerque. Maybe the greatest Lobo of them all. Jarrell Presley trying to find a lane. Sometimes said you got to stick it up in there. If it's a three-yard gain, take the three yards. Especially if you're, you're only back there. The hole might be directly ahead. You just have to run through some softness. And that'll be a first down for Lamar Jordan. Trying to raise up and throw the smoke route down to the near sideline. You see him telling Bundy, he's trying to yell at Bundy to be ready for it. Be ready for the smoke route, which means if the safety or the corner is too far off of you, I'm just going to raise up and give you the ball in space and let you go get the first down. It's a, an alert play there from the QB. But if you're the Hawaii, you've got to be aware that this guy can move his feet. You've got to have somebody on the spy with him. Good tempo to this drive for Bob Davey in New Mexico. Absolutely. And you see, again, our guy, Terion Gibson, 
with the quick hitter up the middle. And, he, and you watch him hit it up inside. It's a lot, of, a little bit different than Jarrell and some of the other guys that are, are big, known as big play playmakers. He gets it and hits it up inside hard. Gibson spins and falls forward for about six yards to the 29-yard line. Again, if you're just joining us, New Mexico had the 90-plus yard drive first time they touched it and then coughed it up inside the five-yard line. Their points came on a 104-yard. I count the yards, by the way, in the end zone. I do, too. You should. Yeah. Everybody should. Yep. I mean, he's running there. He, he, he did run it. Uh, Carlos Wiggins, 104-yard kick return touchdown. Inside, Presley, the pile moves, and then he gets rejected out the other way. He's going to be a little bit short. It's going to set up a fourth down. And New Mexico is not shy about going for it on fourth down. Not only are they not shy, they've been successful 10 out of 12 times this year on fourth down. Well, they're way better on fourth down than they are in third down situations. They have been successful so far. That was the first, the second time they didn't convert on third. And it's a, it's a full yard and a half. They're bringing in a bigger back, Romel Jordan. Or quicker back, I should say. Here's the option. Jordan's got it. And uh, fancy footwork on the sideline. First down, New Mexico at the 22-yard line. That's what makes it so dangerous defensively. You, you ram the dive up in there. You ram the zone up in there. And then all of a sudden, you go option weak. You fake the fly sweep. Reese White pulling out, doing a nice job kicking out. And Ramel Jordan tight roping. Definitely glad to have this young man back in the lineup. He's a talented guy from Rio Rancho here in New Mexico and Cleveland High School. That's a big power here in the state of New Mexico. Presley inside the 20, keeps the pads moving. To the 17-yard line. That's Jordan again. Oh, excuse me, that is Jordan. I mean, that Four, place, not six. Places a factory up there. Reese White, Cole Gauche. And a bunch of players from that high school that done a lot of good things. Great play. Well, he wise to drop it, and that one may That's draw a flag. That's foul. That's ridiculous right there. And Bob Davies got his hands spread out as if to say, are you kidding me? That's got to be a flag. Nick Nelson threw him to the ground. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 11, defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. See, he reads it, makes a great play, and then you go compound, make, make it a problem. I mean, that's ridiculous right you know, there. The only, no reason. The, for yeah, it. the only thing I'll say in his defense, if he doesn't see the football, he may not realize he hasn't caught it. And that, that had to be the situation. But it's going to well, cost him half was, the distance. His hand was in there on the breakup, though, it looked like. So it'll be first and goal at the eight-yard line for New Mexico. And this is Romel, and inside the five to the three-yard line goes Romel Jordan, 5'8", 180-pounder. Finally healthy. He's got a lot of injuries. Bright kid. He's a biology major. They've got just a stable of, of backs and skill guys here. Well, they've done a good job under Bob in his fourth year recruiting to this offense and the uniqueness of this offense. Inside, Presley, end zone, touchdown, New Mexico. Jarrell Presley, fourth touchdown of the year. Ninth leading rusher all time here for the University of New Mexico. And the Lobos on top, 13 to 10. Nice lead inside by Anaya. Just a deception. You got moving parts going everywhere. And all you need is a little softness once you get down there. And Presley hits it. See the celebrations continue with the two touchdown makers down there. That was the handshake you were <laughs> trying to teach us before the game. It just took too long. I lost patience. I, I didn't want to start yelling at you guys. I understand. Zach Rogers. <laughs> 
punches it through, and it's 14 to 10, New Mexico. You want to talk about a vintage Lobo drive with that triple option attack? 17 plays, 82 yards. 14-10, New Mexico. Jarrell Presley into the end zone from a couple yards away. Seven and a half minute drive for New Mexico. From the two yard line, this is Evelico. It's Ikaika Woolsey, a quarterback, 12 starts a year ago. So he's got confidence and he's got composure and he completes that outcut for 11 yards. That's uh, Dylan Colley. Colley having a, a nice first half. You see Wittick helping get the plays in. Wittick's 13 in the middle. The other thing, they're, they're playing without Quentin Pedroza as well. Yeah, he, he's their top receiver. Number five, Laka Laka straight ahead. Carried by number four is he. And again, Dakota Cox tackles him and helps him up. Number 49, Dakota Cox. That's the other thing. You'll never see the guy talk. Game of four. You do any of that nonsense he is just a football player how many helmets he goes through in a season huh said second down and six harris steps outside he gets out to about the 49 yard line setting up a third down and manageable clock moving inside five and a half to go before halftime very competitive game two teams that Really need a victory. New Mexico at three and three. Hawaii, they lost three straight. They're two and four. Two teams that are striving to prove their programs. And I would look at look for number 23 here, Dylan Collier from the defense. I'm going to try to get hands on him. Don't allow him to get a free release. You got nine in the box. Pressure coming, and Woolsey escapes. He still wants to throw it deep, and. Catch is made at the three-yard line. Is that Collie again? Yes, it is. What a first half for Dylan Collie, a pickup of 48. And he is awfully close, Wolseley is, to this line of scrimmage. As he breaks contain and gets outside, you're going to see the wheel route right here out. And then once he sees the quarterback break out, he's got a corner to start with. He just takes off and gets upfield. Tremendous catch, and that is tough on anybody to cover for that long. Five catches, 75 yards for Dylan Colley. Two oh, tights, one. Harris trying to run wide. He gets a block, dives toward the end zone, and is short. Marked out at the one. Good effort there by Paul Harris, who's had a good first half. The junior from Columbus, Ohio. It's a really good answer drive. See, great job running the feet by the big offensive lineman on the edge outside. Really nice job. Moving your feet, getting to the edge, led by Kolo Matangi. Harris will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, and Hawaii. So the Rainbow Warriors go back on top here in Albuquerque. Great answer drive. Great execution the entire way down. Quarterback made some plays with his feet. Number 43, Rigoberto Sanchez. What about Paul Harris getting back, back in the, the lineup? The paying Rigoberto. dividends immediately. You see the goal line defense right there, submarining. Well, his nickname is House Call, and he just made a house call. <laughs> it's a good nickname. It may stick. It's a great nickname if you're a running back. Got to live up to it. He has this evening. 17 14 Hawaii with 433 to go in the first half. 17 14 Hawaii with a couple of long drives in this football game and also a long field goal of 49 yards. So they're up 17 14. Harris, one career touchdown coming in. He's got two. In the game, Sanchez again keeping it away from Wiggins, and he has that one through the back of the end zone, so that's well done. So, and Presley on first down, doing a little too much dancing, I think, for Bob DeBest, the offensive coordinator for Bob Davey, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. Well, you got to get out of the mindset that every play is going to be a home run. And 
you do that, you're going to have success on the quick hitters inside. You just got to hit it. If you get a half a yard or if you just get back to the line of scrimmage, that's all you want. You don't want the negative plays. That gets your offense off rhythm and out of, out of place in the playbook. As coaches like to say, get them off schedule when you have a negative play. Second down and 11. 308, 306, the clock moving here in the late stages of the first half. That's a delivery to the 45 yard line, well thrown. The ball Bubble. came out at the end, and now they're calling it incomplete. Chris Davis. This is a good throw right here. It's a seam route off the play action. Jordan puts the ball on the back hip, which is fine. You see right there, Davis comes into play, gets it right around the linebacker. And I'm not so sure that's a fumble right there. He turns and takes a step with it. See, Rad, firm control of the ball. And lost possession prior to touching the ground. The fumble was recovered by Hawaii. The first and 10 Hawaii at the 46 yard line. That is an enormous play. Now, coming into this football game, New Mexico was plus five on the season in the all-important turnover category, and Hawaii was minus nine. You're talking about Hawaii with a three-point lead, plenty of time, 2.56 to go before the break, and a little more than half a field to work with. Best field position they've had all evening. There's been a lot of bests for Hawaii this evening on the mainland. They're playing with energy, making plays. Malanga did a great job of finishing the play not just say, okay, well, the guy's going to go down. I'm going to just, it's going to be a catch. He went in and poked the ball out. That was a fantastic play by Milonga. So Ikeka Woolsey, Ikeka Woolsey out of the shotgun. And he's going to hand it off and a uh, big gain. Look at that. They can't get Harris to the ground. He dragged tacklers for 14 yards. Talk about a shot in the arm for an offense. If you look at Harris, you watch his body type. He's a long linear type guy not, not a big burly type guy but he keeps the legs moving and there see that Dijon Harris or Dijon Allen pull around and kick out open up a nice hole that's a nice physical run they go two tights again and they're going to go on the boot on the play action and the drag across to the 28 yard line is complete incomplete oh he dropped the football that was uh Unga Tui Unga, who's got a couple brothers in the NFL. That's one he's got to catch. Absolutely. This is a great throw by Kaika Woosley on the move. He, he checks his slip route, which is in the flat. He looks there, doesn't like it. He looks at his comeback, but look at the drag coming across the field. You've got to reach your hands out. Don't let it get into your body. Your, your team is going. Everything's going well. You let it get into your body and falls right through the ground. Second and ten. Harris cuts off a block and he gets to the 34, maybe the 33 yard line. That's a strong, strong, strong run. He's closing in on 100 yards here in the first half. That was his 18th carry of the game. And he's playing like a guy that's been out of the lineup. That's a little bit hungry to be in there. And only five carries last week. 95 yards rushing for Harris. Laka Laka comes in. Got a couple of good runs. And they'll swing it to Laka Laka. He's got a block on the edge, runs out of bounds at the 27 yard line. First and 10 for Hawaii. 152 to go in the first half. This is quick screen to the tailback. You're going to see the left guard shoot the end upfield and let him go. Ben Clark pulls to the edge and gets outside. And for a guy that doesn't practice, watch number 71 move. He's got a bad foot problem. But he moves outside and is able to get out there and get in some space. Hawaii, 29% on third downs this season coming in. Six of eight said this evening. First and 10 from the plus 27 yard line. Hawaii with a three point lead. And a deep shot's got a man out there. Touchdown, Hawaii. Guess who? Dylan Cully. Right now they are picking picking on the Lobo or the Nickelback. First career touchdown for Dylan Colley, the BYU transfer. Big time play. You get the right matchup. You see Woosley audibles to this play. You get your, your guy inside. You thought they would have changed it up. The last possession on the touchdown when he had the long catch. 
when he had the long catch again, it was against that Jake Rochaller, who is the Lobo or the Nickelback. They're getting it matched up against guys that can't cover well in space. Austin, or, Austin Colley, I'm calling him his brother. Dylan Colley is having a day. New Mexico's perspective, a tough first half. Hawaii's got to be thrilled. 24-14, they lead by 10. Let's get it now to our Root Sports studio. Mark Stout and Brad Thompson standing by. Fellas. Homecoming in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and a lot of the home folks are stunned right now. Hawaii would score just 14 points in their last three games, all losses, as a 10-point lead as we get set for the third quarter. And Hawaii's been able to run the football, and surprisingly, they have thrown it very, very effectively. And they're being led by Dylan Colley. Six receptions, 100 yards. From New Mexico standpoint, what do they have to do to get back in the game? Stick to the plan. I mean, they've got to come out and run the ball. They can't come out in the second half, and, and especially if Lamar Jordan's in the game, you can't come out and try to get behind the sticks. You've got to come out and be successful on first downs. And then my question is, once you go in the second half and you can't get the running game going, when do you pull a trigger and possibly put in Apodaca to let him throw the ball around the yard? Mexico will get it to begin the second half. Carlos Wiggins, who's back deep, Obviously, the guy they want to handle it. He went 104 yards earlier in the game. This is not Wiggins. It's out to the 20, and then trying to retrace his steps is Ridge Jones. And he ended up losing six yards from where he had originally gotten to. Let's go downstairs, check in again with Torrey Holt. Torrey, what do you know? Well, Drew, both of these coaches, uh, very different perspectives coming out of the locker room there. Norm, jo Norm Chow was very focused, said we haven't been able to stop them offensively. They're running the ball really well. We need to keep playing and continue to be consistent on offense. For Bob Davey, he was stern and emphatic. Take this personal. I know we haven't played very well defensively, but he said we have to take this personal and can't let them come in here and dance around on our field. Well, they start out, Torrey, on the ground with a guy that had a good first half, Jarrell Presley, and he moves ahead for four yards. So it'll set up a second down and six for Presley. In the first half, Presley had some big chunks, including a 33-yarder. He's got uh, 45 yards rushing in the first half, now uh, just shy of 50. And this is a recipe they used against New Mexico State. They came out at half. They were trailing in that game, came out and established a run as they're doing here. Here's Presley with a big opening out to the 30. He has good vision, doesn't he? He really does. And he wants, I think sometimes it gets him in trouble because he doesn't just hit it, but he's patient. He wants to let it develop. As you see him, a little jump cut, it's a little inside zone, and right there he's able to get back to the right side. Everything's going left. And he got a quick throw, and on a little skinny post, it is complete to the tight end, Reese White. He had nice. that big catch in the first half. I think you can do more of this. Little, it's a dive pop pass. He runs his normal track as if he's going to block, but he turns up the field. Good throw and catch. Anyhow, New Mexico has it. They're in plus territory. They run triple option to the wide side, and they'll get a good gain on first down. Gibson on the pitch. Gets nine or ten. They're going to mark him just shy of the stick, so it's a pickup of nine for... Terion Gibson, the junior from Dallas. <laughs> Play looks like it's stretched out initially. See Oldenkamp getting penetration in the backfield. That usually doesn't bode well for option offense, but a great early pitch. He's able to push it outside wide enough where Gibson doesn't have to break stride for it. And Gibson to the edge. And he runs out of bounds after advancing the sticks. Pick up a four. First down, Lobos trailing by 10. Here's the pick again. It's just a nice play by Crosby. They're trying to run Dylan, Dylan Colley on a crossing route. He doesn't stem enough. When you got man coverage, you've got to stem. You can't just take off and run. Think you can outrun a guy across the field. You've got to stem him and move him laterally. Didn't happen. Crosby makes the big play. Here's Jordan's speed option. He keeps it. And he's knocked down around the 14-yard line. See, that time there was a little corner fire outside. 
from Hawaii. They, they left forced in that cover two. They forced with the corner from the field side. He left his man, came down inside, knowing that he had safety help over the top. See Jordan doing a nice job cutting up inside with a nice gain on first down. And it's been all Lamar Jordan again in this game. We've not seen Austin Apodaca. That's a good cut right there, staying in bounds. That was well done by Romel Jordan. He stayed in bounds, made a cut, and got the first down when it looked like it was going to be no gain. That's just good balance. I mean, I thought my knees hurt watching the cut. He's got younger knees than you. <laughs> a couple years, I think. It is first and goal for New Mexico at the 9. 9.20 to go in the third quarter, 24-14 Hawaii. And a handoff and a loss of a yard. And every time there's penetration in the backfield, uh, you don't even need to look and uh, check out the number. You know who it's going to be. Kenny Tulimase Ali'i. 6'1", 285 pound junior. He is a force. I think between the two of us, we spent about six hours practicing that name. Man, all morning. <laughs> Set the alarm for six and took a nap, practiced some more. Option, this is well defended by Hawaii. They're going backwards right now. New Mexico, back-to-back -back negative plays. That's Lewis coming up. Daniel Lewis, a sophomore from New Iberia, Louisiana. He went a long way to play his college long football. Way. A long way. But you're going to watch the force on the edge. Right there, the table is set right there on the edge. Well, that's a great form tackle. Got his head across the bow. Jim Akalibea set the edge there, number 55. I mean, that's a tough one. Chalk that up to good defense. Third and goal at the 12. Jordan had a shuttle look, was looking for a backside throw, not there. Now throws late, end zone shot, touchdown. Touchdown, and a flag comes in. That's David and Naya. If it stands, it'll be his second touchdown of the year. It will. The play resulted in a touchdown. The 15-yard penalty will be carried over to the kickoff. Drive for points. I'm not sure if it was 55 or 75, Cody Rasmussen. You know, sometimes those big guys, they, they, they run along, run around a long way. And they want some pay. For they it. want something. They want, want the carrot at the end of the stick. That is 55. Makani Kima Kalavea, Kalavea. Right there, and it's, uh, oh, I don't know about that. He wasn't trying to get much, but if you're going to get a flag, you're going you're gonna to get a lot more. I mean, that's. Extra point from Zach Rogers is good. We have a field goal game now, 24-21. Hawaii has New Mexico with the first score of the second half. Bob Davey, after the penalty, they're kicking off from the 50. If there was ever an opportunity to say, well, you want to gamble and try an onside kick, this would be the situation. However, New Mexico hasn't done a real good job until the last series stopping Hawaii. So you may say, you know what? We're going to kick it along the ground and go cover it. Hawaii expects them to kick off. And that's what they do, just blast it out of the end zone. Hawaii shows, or excuse me, New Mexico shows blitz. They bring five. It's complete for a first down on a little in cut. Complete to 84, Isaiah Bernard, the junior from North Hills, California. Yeah, the coach Chow talked to us about last night that he's coming along in the offense. They run the bubble on the, on the inside and then the slant. Great job of getting flat and moving the defender. That's a really nice route. Turns Nias Martin around. Three catches, 63 yards now for Bernard. Big first down for Hawaii. They'll go on the ground. This is Laka Laka, and he'll get 12. He's a guy I think that seeks contact. Former Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Hawaii when he was coming out of high school. Physical runner. See, it's a nice zone read. Good job of getting out in front, eating up the blockers by the offensive line. Five carries, 38 yards for Laka Laka. Woolsey looks to the sideline. He's going to change the play. No 
Here we go, zone read. Harris ahead to midfield to pick up a three. I'd like to see Woolsey in that zone read really explode towards the line of scrimmage. Then you keep the outside linebacker from folding down in, helping on the play. And a lot of times QBs will hand that off and, and just kind of jog out there. But if you can hand it and take off like you've got it, you keep a hat off your running back. That'll be the final play. Three chapters closed in Albuquerque, New Mexico. A good one between the Lobos and the Rainbow Warriors. Three-point game as we head off to the fourth quarter. 24-21 Hawaii as we begin the fourth quarter with Cedric Bonner and Tori Holt. I'm Drew Goodman. Glad you're along this evening on Root Sports. Competitive matchup between the Rainbow Warriors and the Lobos on homecoming in Albuquerque. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Red Lobster. So Hawaii has it at midfield facing a second and seven. Both quarterbacks have played well in this game. And Ikaika Woolsey didn't know he was going to start probably until about an hour and a half before the game when Max Wittick determined he couldn't go with knee issues. And they're going to run a nine route. Contact, but the ball wasn't really catchable. But you know what? Let's see if they pick that one up. I don't know if that's catchable. It's, uh, you, you still can't run through the guy. If the receiver can make the attempt to come back and get it. Isaiah Bernard was the intended target, and the cover man was Cranston Jones. Pass interference, number three, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. And as long as the defender doesn't turn and try to make a play for the ball, you see the press coverage, they're taking a shot. Cranston doesn't look back, and he bumps him. I mean, that's a, that's a P.I. call. I mean, I think Kaka Woosley hits his hand. He hit it on another hand, not uh, a helmet. That's not good. That, he hands off to Harris on first down, and Harris got five. Second 100-yard game for Paul Harris this year at 147 against Cal Davis. One of the two victories this season for Hawaii. Got 125 on 22 carries. What a shot in the arm he's been for Hawaii this evening. Big time. They'll go under center, two tights. Straight ahead, Harris spins off one, and then is... Dragged down finally by the strong safety Ryan Santos. He was tackled awkwardly right there. Both guys come up hobbling. It's been a physical game. It has. If you come back from injury and get yourself back on the field. Third and five. Trips left for Woolsey. There's plenty of space out there if you want to throw a bubble or a rocket screen out to the left side of the field. New Mexico brings a casino blitz, and Woolsey gets to the 30 and dropped there. Donnie White back there on the play. I mean, there's pressure from everywhere. Donnie White, junior from St. Louis, 240-pound edge rusher. Cody Baker as well, a young freshman. Well, that's a that's a tough assignment for Laka Laka. It is. <laughs> trying it is. to block him off the edge. You see Ryan Langston bringing some pressure and getting there first, and then the rest of the guys coming in to finish. We go Berto Sanchez, a 49-yarder earlier. This one's from 47. And this looks good. And it is. So Sanchez with two long field goals in the game, and that extends Hawaii's lead to six, 27, 21. He hit that cleanly. 12.59 to go in the fourth. 27, 21, Hawaii trying to snap a three-game losing streak and upset homecoming here in Albuquerque. Plenty of time to go for the Lobos. 12.59 in the fourth quarter. And... This is going to be nine yards deep. Rich Jones puts the knee down. The Jordan from his own 25, and he hands it off to Gibson, and he slips through a hole, gets seven or eight. 
two huge plays occurred in the first half. It's time for our Ally Bank turning point of the game, and it's turning points on the mesh. The fumble caused when New Mexico had driven 93 yards, and then this catch and then fumble late in the first half. Both times it looked like New Mexico was going to produce points. Got it. Great defensive plays on both those. Penetration against the option will kill you, and Malonga just playing the play. Wow. Boy, that's uh, strong legs. Gibson fell forward despite being uh, wrapped up by Kema Kalavei here. Gibson darts ahead across the 33, 34-yard line. Just shy of a first down on third down, so it's going to bring up fourth and one. And you got to punt the football. You think where it's situated? Plenty of time here. Let your defense stand up for you. But I love the way Terry Hunt Gibson runs the football, man. It, it, He's aggressive. He is really, really aggressive. North and south. Zach Rogers will hit this football from about his own 20. It'll be his third punt. He's got the wind going with him. Nick Nelson back at his own 28. In Hawaii, you want to be smart with this ball. If it's not a situation where you can make a clean catch, get away from it. Catch at the 28 and across the 35 to the 38. It's a punt of 38, a return of 10. 10.57 to go in the fourth quarter. 27-21, Rainbow Warriors. And they go straight ahead for about six or seven to Steven Laka Laka. Nice first down run, a power run. Seems like anytime they get in that, that double tight set, single back, they're going to pound the football a little bit. Laka Laka breaks it across the 45 to the 47, a first down. Shifty back. With that, that at the top of that will we'll punish you if you don't come up ready to tackle. He had a big game against Colorado a year ago. He rushed for 123 yards. A All Mountain West Conference academic selection two years ago. And he's a workhorse here on this drive. Crosses midfield to the 48-yard line in New Mexico. Maybe by design and, and, and just need because you know, Paul Harris went out with those the ankle injuries and, and really didn't look right when he came back in the game. It's kind of cold out there, so it's kind of stiffen up on him. Laka Laka, a nice turn to. We're trying to close out a game. Four straight carries for Laka Laka, and this time he's met in the backfield. 58, Maurice Daniels, junior from Colinga, California. Big time play. Big time play at a big time moment in the game. Third and eight, clock moving inside 6.50 to go. The Lobos at home trailing by six. What's been so impressive to me is that Coach Cosgrove has been able to dial up the right pressure or the right gap fit blitz at the right time. He's done an outstanding job with this defense. Three receivers left on third and eight. And it is complete to the 38-yard line. Dylan Colley. Wow. He was one of the inside receivers, ran an out cut, and that was well delivered by the Kaika Woolsey. He beats Travis Green. You see he's the edge defender. Nice job of stimming vertically before he breaks out. Travis Green on the coverage. Not there in time. Nice option route by Colley. I mean, that was an exceptional job of stimming up top and breaking away with some pressure. That was nice. You got some uh, a guy with quicks on a strong safety. Here's Woolsey with a great cut. He got nine. He, made, he, he put it on Daniel Harris in the, in the lane. And that's Lee Crosby comes up, or Kimmy Carson comes up a little banged up. Not what you want. I see the captain, Ben Clark, and 
You forgot about our big man, Leo Kaloma, Kaloa Matangi. Big number 78. Well, 71 who we're talking about, Ben Clark, there he is. 6'3", 300 pounder, he's playing left tackle. I know that Norm Chow believes he can play in the NFL, but back at center where he played a couple of years ago. And this, this kid is terrific. He's a great student. He wants to be a doctor one day. But, you know, you hear where guys maybe don't practice once a week or they're limited in practice. He literally does not practice during the week, and then he straps it up on uh, Saturdays. Because of a bad foot. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how you can do that. But when you're as smart as he is, and you, I'm sure he's taken extreme mental reps, understands his job extremely well, uh, it, it makes it easier for you. It's very hard to do that, not practice and play. Well, said this is how well thought of he is. Last year, he was their offensive MVP, their player of the year. Rock winds inside 315. That's another first down, and this has been a back-breaking drive for Hawaii. Laka Laka to the five-yard line, and New Mexico is in a world of hurt, down by six. Let's just get off by the offensive line. It's straight zone, and he's afforded the ability to cut back. And if you're the safety in the backside safety, or safety in the backside linebacker, you've got to close the gap on that a little bit sooner. There's no threat in the pass over there. They start walling guys down. you, you got to look for him to cut back and fill that lane. The 11th play of the drive, and clock being nursed by Woolsey. This drive started with 8.27 to go in the fourth quarter, and they're going to snap it inside 2.40 to play. Laka Laka hit right around the line of scrimmage. Nice finish by Kenneth Maxwell coming up from the safety spot. And New Mexico is going to have to burn their timeouts. Say enough about the job Bob Davies done. Think about when he took over this program. It, it, these are my words. This was a broken program. They'd won three games. What, three in their previous 33? Ugh. Three football games. And they were being outscored by 31 points. It wasn't like, well, we had some you know, competitive losses. They were non competitive. Each year, though, you watch that number shrink. You watch them shrink. You watch them go toe to toe a year ago with Fresno. Boise. Boise. Really the only game they got beat up in was against Colorado State, and they were a 10-win team a year ago. Lobos had not been to a bowl game since back-to-back -back appearances in the New Mexico Bowl, their home stadium, last one being 07. So another timeout, 2.27 to go. That's Wittick looking on. Again, he couldn't go today. And he's watched his backup. Woolsey play tremendous football. They'll waggle here on third and goal. And you don't, well, he's going to run around for a while. He better throw it away. You don't want to give up too much yardage for the field goal. Now he throws toward the end zone. And it's incomplete. And a flag's down at the five yard line. Woolsey almost ran out the clock by himself. An eligible receiver downfield, number 50 offense. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. So 217. To go, and you'll get the field goal try by Sanchez. And this is a little more than an extra point. It is from the near hash. It's a 22 yard attempt, and it's huge because it would give them a Two score separation. And it's missed. It was shanked left. Wow. Sanchez was a penalty hit earlier. There's a penalty down. Long distance twice. There's a penalty down. Misses from 22 yards. Now, is this one of those ones where a player used Jumped another player to, to propel them? That would be a crushing penalty. Oh, my goodness. I don't see a guy jumping off of somebody else. I didn't, you know, again, we're not, that angle, we're not behind New Mexico. But the guy who got the highest in the air and tumbled didn't look like he was using another player to 
to propel him. This is akin to in baseball when the umpires get together. You know it's not going to end well for the home team. There is no foul for leaping. The field goal was no good. Change of possession. First down New Mexico. 20 yard line. Enormous. And now there's life for New Mexico. And they have plenty of time. 2.14 left. They trail by six. We get Austin Apodaca in the game. And up tempo offense. What, what, do you, what do you think of this? You got a you got a guy that's he's really played well, and now you take a kid who, who's other than throwing a few passes on the sideline, hasn't hasn't thrown a ball three hours. Well, this is this is the really reliever. He's the guy, the up tempo throwing guy. And a safe pass underneath, and they get it out of bounds at the 29 yard line as they go quickly to Damian Gamblin. Well, Austin Apodac, a bigger, stronger, more of a pocket guy, though he is athletic. He can even run around. Don't be fooled by that. And his stats this year, he's throwing the ball for 265 yards. But they're going with Apodac here on what they hope to be a game-winning drive. And on the out cut, timing a little bit off with Reese White. And it's going to be third and two because that first play to Gamblin was an eight-yard gain. He didn't get enough for the first down. Those, those kind of routes, when you're running them as a receiver, you got to make sure you get nice and flat coming out of your break. If you're drifting a little bit upfield, it's a difference between a completion and an incomplete pass because you're falling, coming away from the ball. You have, you have the guts here for a Hawaii corner to squat, knowing they need only a couple of yards. You might get shortish routes. No way. Well, with two minutes, possibly, because you're going to get the ball back if you give up a big one. They throw it in the flat, and the first down <laughs> is successfully uh, gathered in by Romel Jordan. And he got the clock stop going out of bounds with 150. Kemakalea Vea made the tackle and, and really slung Jordan down out of bounds. And you hear the groaning in the crowd. Well, Austin Apodaca has been a lot of places. He started his career, played for his dad, Mike, and he was a tremendous player at Silver Creek High School in Longmont. He went to Washington State on scholarship. He had a big day against number five Stanford when he was playing at Washington State, threw a couple touchdowns against the Cardinal. Ends up transferring to Mesa, Colorado Mesa, good program, a Division II program in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference on the Western Slope. Put up big numbers there and then transferred to New Mexico. This is his first action today. Normally, he is in the football game at different uh, periods of time. He's in trouble, able to escape, and... Uh, Pretty good improvisation there for an eight-yard gain, and the clock stops as Jordan gets flung out of bounds. 143 to go. You got to do whatever you got to do to keep him in bounds if you're Julian Jenner. Once he breaks the tackle there, it's a good job being strong, good flip, but you got to tackle him in bounds. Apodaca, and that ball was touched by three different players, two defenders, and it also was touched momentarily by the intended target, Carlos Wiggins. Doesn't put enough air on it. He's lucky to get this one back. See, Jamal Mayo goes up, gets long on it. Got another one of those third and short situations. Clock stop, 138 to go. Look for something breaking towards the sideline to get the catch and get out of bounds. Gambling in the slot to the near side. The running back is Romel Jordan. And they'll throw a jet out. It's complete for a first down, 45-yard line, and Gambling across midfield to the 49 of Hawaii. Gambling, the leading receiver for New Mexico coming in, quiet until this drive. what's going through Sanchez's mind is he had an opportunity to pretty much ice this football game and he missed a 22 yarder. Apodaca from the plus 40 yard line. Looks to the trip side, he's in trouble. Come on, and he's gonna get it away. Great arm strength to get it in the neighborhood of the receiver. And it'll be second and 10. 
That's what we're talking about. See, Apodaca, that's why he can run the triple option offense. He's not nearly as nimble as Lamar Jordan, on, but he's got athletic ability. You can run the triple option. Cole Gauche wasn't the fastest guy either, but he did a great job of running it. It's just learning how to ride and do the mesh points and do, do all those kind of things. He's definitely athletic enough to do it. I've seen guys with less talent run the option. Second and 10. Apodaca 4-7 on this drive. No timeouts for New Mexico. 108 left on the clock. And he had a man, and he threw that one short. That was Wiggins on a deep out cut. And he overthrows it. Again, throwing off that front foot, you go, you kind of teeter totter from back to back to front, lock out the left leg. But but that's where I go back to. In fairness to Austin Apodaca, he hadn't been in the game, he hadn't been sweating, he hasn't been competing, and it's a it's tough. If it is tough, but if that happens, your first play, I get it. You've been in the game this entire drive. You've taken a couple hits. You got to make that throw. Third and ten. Two receivers each way. Apodaca, and it is complete for a first down. They went right back to Wiggins. And the coverage was much better, the window much smaller. And he drilled that one in there. Boy, he really did in front of Nick Nelson. Again, the out route, he gets back, loads it, and lets it shoot. And this is a tough catch, because there's pressure from Nick Nelson. See the ball, and Nick Nelson right there. And that's just great concentration. Who did he? He's got it in his left hand. I wonder if he possessed that as he went out. Doesn't matter now. Apodaca toward the uh, goal line five. Touchdown, New Mexico! Gambling! Wow. Unbelievable! With 55 seconds left. Look at Jordan, the first dude out there to jump on his back and be excited. There's a lot of time left, people. And that's the one saving grace, perhaps, for Rigoberto Sanchez, who is sick to his stomach right now. But there is enough time where he may get another opportunity. And perhaps Max Wittick is letting him know exactly that. Look at this throw, double move. Double move, stutter and go. They beat the linebacker in space. Good snap and hold, and the kick is true. 28-27 Lobos on homecoming. Apodaca's first touchdown of the year. What a time for it. But there's 55 seconds left for Hawaii. As Bob Davey told us yesterday, the two biggest supporters of one another, Lamar Jordan and Austin Apodaca, and the first guy out on the field, as you said, was Lamar Jordan, who played the first 58 minutes and played well. And he's out there to jump in the arms of Austin Apodaca. Uh, it's, it's incredible, but it, but it galvanizes a team. And those two guys can be together. No matter what the situation, it galvanizes a team, and it makes the team stronger. Kick. <laughs> Sanchez has hit one 49 already. I know he missed from 22. He has a 46 yarder and a 49 yarder in the game. And you know he wants another chance. And that is nearly intercepted as Woolsey was hit as he threw it. One thing you can't do is get in the situation now. You know the Lobos have their ears pinned back. You can't get in the situation where you're holding on to the ball for too long. That's why I liked what you said. With three timeouts, you could run, you can you run, could the, run the football. Lobos like the blitz. They bring five. Woolsey throws, and it is com No, it's complete, but not out of bounds. What, what? Now you got to get a timeout. David, Devin Stubblefield made the catch. And I don't know if Norm Chow realized. No, he wants him to keep going. He wants to save the timeout. He's got to save at least one for a field goal try, but he has three. 
And it is complete out of bounds. That will stop the clock and also move the chains as they go to Dakota, Dakota Torres. Redshirt freshman, it's tight end from Oahu. It's tough. It's such a judgment call on that play to, towards the sideline, whether a guy's out of bounds or not. It's, it's really tough. It's not like in the old days where if you end up out of bounds, you're out of bounds. They're at the 38. Realistically, they need about the 35-yard line. So another 27 yards, somewhere in that neighborhood. Room to run, and he'll get a minimal amount of yards, three perhaps. He'll stop the clock with 21 seconds. That's why I would have called timeout. When they didn't stop the clock with three timeouts, again, it's much easier to do from up here than it is down there. Sanchez, you, you want hope for an opportunity in your pocket. That's why to burn one there would have been the right call. And that's incomplete. Trying to get it to Austin Colley. You know, there's nothing wrong with still running the sideline routes, the, the option routes they ran earlier here's with Colley. The, there's nothing wrong issue. with that. Here's another issue now. It's third and 17. You've got the coverage you want. That's a good job by Lee Crosby staying on top of him, not allowing him to breathe. And why not take a shot with Kemp, or excuse me, Devin Stubberfield down on the bottom of the field. Keep your safety on the hash by looking inside. They're in a two deep, and that is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And a flag is down. It's going to be a hold. Donnie Duncan yeah. bringing the pressure. This started out on this drive decently for Hawaii, and now they're going the absolute wrong Holding direction. Number 71, offense, 10-yard penalty, free play, third down. And now you, get, now you, you really you need an enormous jump here, almost a, a Hail Mary type of situation. And then a clock stop, and it's picked off. And guess who? It's the <laughs> man. <laughs> who's had a terrific ball game, Lee Crosby, the Lobo. And they're going to pile on him. New Mexico with three seconds left just has to put a knee down, and they'll have completed an unbelievable comeback. Down by 10 at halftime, down by six, and they drive for the game-winning drive, and they're going to win it 28-27. Boy, that kid can cover, man. He's not bad, I tell you. He's got a safety-type body. We see him involved in the run game, and he's made two picks. And then makes a smart decision to get on the ground. <laughs> Doesn't try to run it out. They don't, they don't have anything under center, I guess. So <laughs> Apataka at the shotgun takes the snap, puts a knee down. What a victory for the New Mexico Lobos. For the first time in a long time, they've won two of their first three conference games. They've never done that in the Mountain West. It's been crazy to watch this team develop over the last couple of years. You feel An inch closer and closer. Feel for Norm Chow and, yeah, and, and feel for, for Hawaii, Norm Chow but, because they, they played they played their tails off and they got a an emergency performance of the highest level from Ikaiko Woolsey. 28-27, New Mexico on homecoming with a miraculous comeback. And they improve to four and three, two games away from bowl eligibility. They haven't been to a bowl game since 2007. And Hawaii, it will be a long flight, figuratively and literally, back to the islands. Tomorrow, 28-27, New Mexico wins it over Hawaii. We go to our studios in Denver. Mark Stout, Brad Thompson. Guys.